watches a scary movie. I'm T, and of course, we are talking scary movies. I appreciate you tuning in for another brand new episode. Remember, video versions of new episodes go up every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on the YouTube page, and the audio-only version goes up 30 minutes prior to that on all your favorite podcasting platforms. Just got to search T Watches a Scary Movie or Twasm. But of course, if you want to be updated of all the video versions, audio versions, new TikToks, link, uh, excuse me, letterbox reviews, anything like that, the easiest way to keep up to date with that is by hitting my link tree up, which is linktr.ee slash T scary movie. If you check out the link tree, that'll keep you in the loop with all of the new stuff that I upload on a weekly basis. It's your easiest way to stay up to date. But of course, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on a podcasting platform, whether it's on Linktree, and also give me those thumbs up, leave those reviews as well too, folks. We're trying to do something with this, so I need your help. Hit subscribe, hit like as well. So what are we talking about tonight? And movie reviews, I'm gonna be talking Disney's Haunted Mansion. Fantastic film that I got a chance to go see last week. I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts with you on that. But before we get there, we have some horror news to discuss because the trailer for Saw X was recently released and boy, folks, does it look amazing. Um, Saw movies are always fun. Let's be clear about that. Ever since the mid 2000s when these films started coming out, these movies have always been an event to go and do. And I get it. There is a while probably around like the days of five, six, and seven to where maybe a lot of the pandemonium really died down because it seemed like we were just getting them all of the time, which I completely and utterly understand. But the thing is, is that this has really been a solid franchise. Realistically, the only film in the series I wasn't the biggest fan of was Saw 4 and then Saw the final chapter, which of course was not the final chapter because this will now be the third installment that has come after that. But as a whole, this franchise has been really, really good. Now, the most recent entry, Spiral, from the Book of Saw, was set in the future. After we know that John Kramer is dead. End of story, he is dead at this point. That's not spoiling Spiral, because if you've seen the other Saw movies, which have been out for over a decade at this point, he died back in Saw 3. And it's been a running gag of sorts since Saw 3 that every single film that's come after that um, Tobin Bell has appeared in some shape, form, or fashion as Jigsaw. And most of the time, it's been a bit of an extended cameo because other Jigsaw apprentices have taken over in these films. And so typically, it's been some kind of cameo to where he shows up and he's imparting some kind of knowledge on this apprentice to do what they're doing with their game in that film. Spiral uh, was a bit unique because it actually gave us no offense to the other entries But we actually got a really good comprehensive detective story out of that that still involved the typical saw game that we would see in all of these films Now with saw X. It's already been said. It's already out there. This film will take place between Saw uh, saw two or excuse me saw one and saw two this is taking us back there before the majority of the rest of these films happen and it's very much focusing on John Kramer looking for a way to save his life. Because as we learned in the later entries, he had uh, he had some inoperable cancer that was basically going to ultimately kill him. And he was looking for any way to kind of beat that. He was looking for a way to cheat his own death. And unfortunately, didn't find much in the way of help no matter which door they looked into. What's interesting about that, Saw 6, which is uh, sometimes my favorite entry in the series. Sometimes it's my second favorite after Spiral. But Saw 6 focused on the healthcare healthcare industry and how uh, it stinks that they just use a system to determine who's basically worth saving and who's not. And that system was basically applied to the people that were placed in the game during Saw 6, which it's phenomenal. It's a phenomenal movie with phenomenal messaging in that. And Saw X looks to take us back to that kind of storyline because John Kramer travels south of the border to find what's been said to be a life-saving operation for him. But when he finds out that the operation was a sham and that these people have taken advantage of him and countless others, John has decided to take all these people responsible for this and put them into his own very twisted game. What I think is most interesting about this is that if you're watching the trailer, this very much seems that for the first time that 
Jigsaw himself might actually be our protagonist. In all the other entries, all the other entries with the exception of Saw 2 and Saw 3, we don't get that much screen time with Jigsaw. I mean, even two, he was combined to, you know, this chair next to Donnie Wahlberg's character for the majority of the film, basically telling him, look, if you chill with me, you and your son are going to be okay. And of course, he was counting on the fact that uh, Donnie Wahlberg's character was not going to do that and basically uh, be the result, uh, be the cause of, of the whole game and everything that was coming after that. And Saw 3, again, it's, it's another movie about trying to save this man's life as he finishes the last game that he's going to be able to enact with the help of multiple apprentices at that point. But still, though, he was kind of the secondary character to everything else that was going on. This film looks fascinating because for once, it seems that Jigsaw is our lead character. And in a franchise that is now on its 10th entry, that's extremely weird to think that this is now the first time that he's the lead of it. And compared to other franchises, I know Saw is not comparable to your Friday the 13th, your Nightmare on Elm Streets or anything like that. But we're used to in all these other horror films that the villain is taking up a good chunk of the screen time because they're killing so many people. Jigsaw was always so different because he's not technically killing these people. I mean, yes, he's responsible. If he went to if he went to went to court, he'd absolutely be held liable for all this. But Jigsaw himself is not responsible for actually committing all these deaths that happen throughout these various films. And so he never really had that much reason to be directly involved or directly referenced here on screen. So the fact that it looks like he's going to be the lead character of this movie is fascinating. It has me intrigued and I want to see it. The downside to this now, of course, is that because it's set between Saw 1 and Saw 2, there's only so much you can do here. It's not like Jigsaw is going to die at the end of this film. Spoiler alert, but he's not going to be dead at the end of this movie because clearly Saw 2 and Saw 3 exist in this world. So that's not going to happen. But... In this world of legacy sequels, because y'all heard me talk recently about the Exorcist Believer and just not being amped for that, that I need something more, this is actually incredibly intriguing because the Saw movies have always been convoluted. Every single movie's like, well, wait, I know what you saw, but let's peel back another layer of that onion because here's what we didn't tell you about what you saw in the last film. And I'm always okay with that. And weirdly enough, it doesn't offend me at all that this 10th entry is basically a prequel, that it's set like 15 years ago from when Saw 2 came out. I don't actually have that much of an issue with this happening at all. 15, I think it's more than that. I think it's actually uh, more like 18 years, weirdly enough. But I don't actually have any issues with that at all. I think that's actually incredibly cool, the fact that we're gonna take it back there because I know it kind of boxes them into a corner but my expectation is that this is not the end of things and that we are going to peel back even more layers that is going to expand into more sequels at that point because Spiral left the franchise very much open for another entry that's set in like current times. So if this is going to take place years and years ago at this point and we know that it has the like doesn't have to lead directly into saw 2 but it might get as close to that i'm very interested in what other things are going to pop up like is hoffman going to show up in this one which has me incredibly intrigued and as dumb as it sounds i think i would uh i would pop for a hoffman cameo in this one honestly i really really would just because we know he had been around jigsaw for a while at that point so we'll see. The film is actually coming out earlier than what it was originally supposed to. It's now set for release on September 29th, and I think it's going to kill in theaters, honestly. So be on the lookout. Check that trailer out. It is dope, y'all. And of course, I'm going to be back here with a review for you on that here in September. So don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break, and I'll be back with my review of Disney's Haunted Mansion. Hey everybody, looking for a great way to stay up to date on horror news as well as read the best of articles on anything scary out in the world right now? Then you need to head over to the Fangoria shop and get yourself a subscription. 
If you go to shop.fangoria.com slash AXDEW, you can use my own personalized 20% discount to save 20% off on Fangoria Magazine subscriptions, as well as 20% off any other items in their fantastic shop. This is a great deal. If you've ever been wanting to get yourself a subscription, now is the time to do so. Head to shop.fangoria.com slash AXDEW. Welcome back to T Watches a Scary Movie. Now, to start you off with a quick story here, back in 1995, my family was on the way to Australia for the next three years. I was an Air Force brat, and in 95, we were gonna be moving to Australia, and my dad decided that because we were gonna have to go to LA anyway, because we were flying from LAX to get to Australia, we were gonna go ahead and hit some of the amusement parks up because we had never had that chance, because we had lived uh, pretty much on the East Coast growing up, and so we didn't have the opportunity to go to a lot of those parks. We never went to Florida or anything, but can't pass up a chance being in California. So we went and checked out Universal Studios, which was dope back in the day. That's when they still had Back to the Future and they had the Terminator 2 uh, 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 ride or show, whatever you want to call it and everything. It was a great time. Loved Universal Studios, but we also went and we checked out Disneyland as well too. And as somebody who was starting to uh, learn of their love of horror, I was still terrified by a lot of things. And we got a chance to go on the Haunted Mansion. And I remember being stoked for it, not only because it was nice and cool inside of the Haunted Mansion, but also it's their scary ride. This is the scariest ride in the park, obviously. And I said, I'm gonna do great. I'm not gonna get scared. It's gonna be an awesome time. And as we stepped into the foyer and the ghost host starts talking to all of you and the room starts stretching, I shut my eyes and that was it for me because I was freaked out that entire time. I opened them again up when you have to walk to get on the doom buggies and everything. And then at the very end, my mom was trying to coerce me to open my eyes up when they put the ghost in the doom buggy with you. And I said, no, fuck that, that's not happening. I didn't say that to my mom, but in my head I was like, no, we're not doing this at all. But I closed my eyes the entire time and I didn't get to see the majority of the Haunted Mansion. Now, of course, Years later, when we moved back to the United States, I've been to Disneyland and Disney World multiple times. I've been on the Haunted Mansion numerous times, and it's without question my favorite attraction across any of the theme parks that I've ever had the pleasure of going to. There's just something incredibly special about it. And almost 30 years later, 30 years later, from my first time not getting to enjoy the Haunted Mansion, Disney has released their second adaptation of the movie based on this ride. And I am not afraid to tell y'all, this is one of my favorite films of the year. Now, Justin Simeon, director of Dear White People and Bad Hair, directs a script, from, uh, directs an excellent script from Katie DePold, who you might know who wrote Ghost, uh, Ghostbusters Answer the Call, as well as The Heat, that gets the right blend of humor for both adults and kids. There is plenty joke, plenty of jokes in this that are perfect for not just your younger audience, but also for your older audience without really alienating one side or both. And a lot of movies don't have the ability to keep that balance. But not only that, there are some incredibly spooky visuals here in the movie, and there's actually a lot of heart to it as well too. Now, it's worth pointing out here that Disney is unique in a way that a good portion of their rides at their parks are not based on existing IP. Um, and what I mean by that is, is that while they do have rides for, you know, they, they have Peter Pan and Cinderella and Aladdin and things like that, there are just as many rides that aren't based on anything like Space Mountain or Expedition Everest and the Haunted Mansion at that as well too. And so while Justin Simeon and Katie DePold were tasked with honoring quite a large number of elements from the ride, and they definitely do this very successfully, um, the bigger task here was actually putting together a story behind this house has 999 souls, but there's always room for one more. Ben, played by Lakeith Stanfield, who you might know from Get Out or The Harder They Fall, is an astrophysicist living in New Orleans, who, after suffering a terrible tragedy, has begun taking up a job as running ghost tours throughout the famously haunted city. And due to his expertise in this field, Father Kent, played by Owen Wilson, who you might know from Loki or Paint, refers Ben to Gabby, 
Rosario Dawson from uh, the upcoming Ahsoka series or uh, Clerks 3, and her son Travis, played by Chase W. Dillon, who have recently moved into Gracie Manor only to discover that this place is plagued by ghosts. Now, Ben, Father Kent, Gabby, Travis, and others will have to set aside their disbeliefs and various tragedies to save each other from the evil threat that seeks to take one more soul for its evil purposes. Now, whether you've seen it or not, it's highly likely that you're gonna have a hard time not thinking about the previous Eddie Murphy adaptation of The, Ro of the Ride, which by no means is a terrible movie. Uh, I mean, I've seen it before, and no, while it's not my favorite thing in the world and it's not something that I'm gonna put on myself, I don't think it's actually as bad as a lot of people made it out to be. I mean, Eddie Murphy was doing certain kinds of movies back in the 2000s. This just happened to land in something with some existing IP for him. It's not a bad movie, honestly. But the thing is, is that that movie is predominantly a comedy that's really lacking any kind of real heart to it or any kind of scares. And DePold's script here is very, very heartfelt. Um, it imbues an immense amount of emotion throughout the various characters and their stories. So many of these characters in this film have gone through all these different tragedies, which actually are pretty heartbreaking when you really start thinking about it. Um, whether it be gr uh, you know um, grieving widowers who are unable to figure out how to successfully navigate through life now that their partner is gone, uh, whether it's experts who are looking to help that have faced endless ridicule from their peers and friends and their family, um, I found myself really invested in every single member of the Dream Team, which has is hilariously stated that it's already taken as a name itself. But this team also includes Danny DeVito and Tiffany Haddish as well. And it's an incredibly diverse cast of bigger names. I mean, again, like Keith Stanfield, Rosario, uh, Rosario Dawson, um, Owen Wilson, Tiffany Haddish, Danny DeVito, but also Jamie Lee Curtis, Hassan Minaj, who I'm hoping gets that Daily Show host job, and Winona Ryder, amongst others, all show up for various parts in this movie, whether it be as a lead role or as a cameo. And it seems that everybody is given this great balance of adding something hilarious for you to see or something heartbreaking. No person in this cast, I feel, is ultimately wasted with maybe Dan Levy, maybe getting the short end of the stick there, but still his, uh, his part in this movie is absolutely hilarious as well. And I feel that it was such a tall task here for this uh, for the behind the scenes team to find that balance of humor and also making it a really good story to be invested in and they do a phenomenal job with that now Haunted Mansion does a tremendous job of honoring the ride, whether it's featuring all the trademark ghosts that are throughout it, uh, like in the foyer or the attic, um, the dining room, the graveyard, actually showing all these various locations that are on the ride as well too, the doom buggies, the recurring use of the grim grinning ghost theme song that's on the ride itself, um, even the ghost host lines that are given to various characters throughout the film, this movie does a great job of honoring what the ride is famously known for. And comparing it to 2021 Jungle Cruise, which is pretty much the only other ride to film adaptation that they've done, um, I've said before that there's a little bit more to work with because along with all the winks and the nods that go to the Haunted Mansion, I feel that um, the Jungle Cruise movie was very much like, it was kind of like The Mummy, if you've ever seen that. I've said that before, that I kind of felt that it was just an adaptation of the Brendan Fraser like first Mummy movie, basically. Which, it was still really, really good, but the Jungle Cruise ride didn't really give anybody much to work with. So everybody had to make, like the entire thing had to be made up. Whereas here with Haunted Mansion, I feel that they had so much more to pull from from that ride, even if there's not exactly an established story there with it. Now, I did say earlier there's a lot of incredible spooky visuals in this film, and they're incredibly creepy as well, too. But in terms of actual scares within the film, I didn't feel that there was that much to offer. And that's kind of weird thinking that there's so many of these plot lines in the film that involve just straight up murder that the movie's not really that scary. I think younger audiences might get a thrill or two from it, but... It's not a criticism with it there, but I could have used a few more, a few more with it. It's not like I was expecting this to be like poltergeist or anything like that, but it is very interesting that it's following suit with um, like Hocus Pocus 2, for example, that came out last year. The original Hocus Pocus isn't scary, 
but there is like if you think about it it is kind of really terrifying to think of that these three witches come back they're trying to basically kill children for them to survive and some really dark things actually happen in that film so i can understand kids getting scared at the first hocus pocus but they jettisoned most of that out of hocus pocus too to where it's it's a fun movie for sure but there's no scares to be had in it I don't think that's necessarily the case here with Haunted Mansion, but there wasn't any point at all where I was watching it to where like I was like, ooh, that's, that's scary or anything. And we've talked about it before. They don't necessarily have to scare you, okay? I think creepy visuals are really good, a great story, the fact there's so much good humor in this, the characters are amazing. There's enough here for you to enjoy, even if it doesn't really have much in the department of scares for you. Speaking of Hocus Pocus though, it's a real shame that Disney decided to go with the same release strategy they did for this to where they're releasing the movie in the summer, but not just in the summer, but literally right after Barbie and Oppenheimer are coming out. So it doesn't really have a chance of being successful at all. I think this movie is really going to find an audience on Disney Plus, and it's likely going to be available on Disney Plus in early to mid September because I can't see this film lasting too much longer when we have the Meg, Ninja Turtles, um, Last Voyage of the Demeter and other coming out here in the next few weeks i don't see how it's going to stay stay in theaters for too too long so it seems like it was purposely put out here just to give a high profile release to disney plus and that sucks but at least hocus pocus went on to become this big cult classic after only a short time and a small box office i'm hoping that the same thing can happen here for haunted mansion again I don't have anything against the 2003 Eddie Murphy adaptation that was done, but it just doesn't capture the spirit of the ride the way that Justin Simeon and Katie DePold's version here truly does. I would implore anybody that was turned off by that 2003 version to give this ghostly haunt a chance. Grim Grinning Ghosts are coming out to socialize in Disney's Haunted Mansion, which is playing in theaters everywhere. Go check it out, folks. And that's going to do it for me here. I appreciate you tuning in for another brand new episode. Please make sure to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well too. Folks, I got some great reviews coming out for you here soon. We're going to be talking till death do us part. We're talking the Meg 2. We're going to be talking Bo is Afraid. The Last Voyage of the Demeter. Quicksand. We have so much great stuff coming for you folks. So stay tuned for some great horror movie coverage. But that's going to do it for me tonight folks. My name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared. Hey, everybody. I appreciate you tuning in for another brand new episode, movie review, game review, whatever it is now at this point. Don't forget, you want to get subscribed to my official channel so you can stay up to date for when I'm dropping new episodes, reviews, news, whatever it is. The best way to do that is get subscribed to my link tree. That's going to be linktr.ee slash tscarymovie. Again, linktr.ee slash tscarymovie. That'll keep you up to date with new videos, podcast links for the audio-only version, as well as my letterbox, where you can find written reviews. Get subscribed, and don't forget, keep watching scary movies, folks. Stay scared.